Okay. People always ask me, what's the difference between your painting and Andy Warhol's? <laughs> 99.9 million dollars. <laughs> I saw your video the last time you were here. Ah, uh, you saw it? I saw it, yeah. I have. So you, you can say that I, to I my... I want your job. <laughs> you can say that. You saw my video? Yeah. Nice, thank you. No, you like really, it? It was really cool. Here. to be able to present at the Conrad Argaard the works of James Francis Gill. James Francis Gill, this amazing man who in his mid-80s has flown over from Texas to be with us tonight. And I can't tell you what a thrill it is for me. And I know that after this very short video and an opportunity of speaking to him and seeing his book and maybe getting him to sign it for you. Uh, once you see this very short video, you will really understand and appreciate what an extraordinary man he is, artist, and how lucky you are to be able to be with him tonight and see his work. So, James... You're beautiful you. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that either. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. I can't mm. tell you how much I mean, it I means to me. I love being here in Portugal. Always wanted to come here, but now I do it. Not too late. <laughs> and you've had the opportunity. Yes, yes, yes. Jim's story is unusual uh, from the standpoint that he had such a brilliant beginning. When he became famous, you know, it's not necessarily whether you're good or not, it's whether you're lucky. So uh, he was both. The second thing that's rather unusual uh, is that Jim walked away from his career. And they took him on. A month later, he, he signed him up for the gallery, immediately started dealing his work. So I went from a country bumpkin to uh, kind of a lot of fame and movie stars and everything within two months. Who well, have been supporting him all these years. I mean, Jim just hit a wall and said, that's it, I'm out of here. 
I, I came to the conclusion about something. All of these. Um, and uh, thank you. That was fantastic. Okay. People always ask me, what's the difference between your painting and Andy Warhol's? <laughs> 99.9 .9 million dollars. <laughs>
here we are in the beautiful Conrad where the exposition is being held. Here it is, Art Cato. James. Jill. Or Gil. I don't know how to pronounce well. Beautiful Conrad. So, please, after seeing all the, the pieces, artwork, choose yours, write it down, the one that you, you like. If you don't know the name or nothing, please just put the, the time that you were seeing the painting and I, I will love to know uh, which one you are loving more. I will love to know which one you enjoyed more. Have fun! Bye bye! It was incredible, I had lots of fun and I hope that you enjoyed. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Uh, don't forget to follow the channel. And please tell me which one was the, the painting that you loved more. It will be really nice to know. And choose by the time of the video that you enjoyed. Bye bye! <laughs>
and I can draw anything I want to <laughs> with a pencil. Does that answer? Thank you very much. I just want to uh, know what was your inspiration? Who was like inspiration for you? Some artist. <coughs> artist. Or maybe not artist, maybe something else. Well, when I, I grew up, I didn't really want to be an artist. I just wanted to be a cowboy. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure there were a few, there were a few cowboy artists that I kind of liked. But then um, a man that worked with my dad, he worked on the railroad, he died and left me 30 years of National Geographic. And the photographs in National Geographic, undersea, plants, people in Africa, all of these things really influenced me then. This was before they had color uh, reproduction like they have now. An art book was all black and white, and you had what was called a tip-in. They printed a color photograph and glued it in on the page. So uh, I can... I know the influence that those had on me. But also another influence, a coloring book. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I can remember, stay inside the line. So, you know, a lot of influences. What did your parents think about all you were doing as you grew up? Um, my mother was an interior decorator in an area that didn't even know what interior decorating was. <laughs> I mean, she did drapes and everything, and she was very, uh, she said, do, do what you need to do, Jim, you know, uh, be an artist if you want to. My dad was different. He said, don't be stupid. <laughs> Get a job on the railroad and get a nice retirement plan and do not be an artist until Life Magazine reproduced <laughs> my Marilyn. And then my dad said, I guess it's okay. Good evening, we know and you are famous now, but imagine if you are beginning your career now, what is your first challenge? for your new career? You know, um, I appreciate that because people ask me that a lot and I haven't the slightest idea what to do. <laughs> you know, I mean, the time now is so different than it was when I was, when I was young. And like um, the man said in the movie, uh, reproduced in Life magazine, that's when Life magazine was something special. It's not special anymore. And there's, there's a million magazines and videos and artists and galleries and, you know, and, and I have to deal with this. I'll, I'll go look at what's being done now by the artist. And I'll say, well, that's neat. You know, that's uh, exciting. But would I want to hang that on my wall? You know, I do paintings with a wall in mind, a living room, hanging on a wall. In fact, I was just uh, telling Ted, our, the painting that I have hanging by my fireplace has been hanging there for 15 years, and I still like that painting. It's one of the original nudes on a balcony, and literally it's just a woman's hand with her face in it, and her lips are on the balcony, kind of like a bird would perch there. And it was, um, I just love the painting, and it hangs there. So, you know, you just find something, that gut feeling, and you get it, and you hang it on your wall. Okay. <laughs> what advice would you give to new artists, artists who want to make it in the art world? Uh, 
novos artistas, o que é que aconselha? <risos> Uh, I wouldn't have the slightest idea. Like, you know, like I think that movie said where I carried three paintings into a gallery. So I asked, what's the best gallery in L.A. area? I said, Felix Landau. Just took three paintings under my arm and walked in and, and uh, put them down on the floor and looked at the show. And he said, whose paintings are these? And I thought, whoops, made a mistake. He said, they're mine. He said, come into my office, I want to talk to you. And uh, he asked me who I was, where I was from. And he told me that, he said, I'm going to set you up in a studio, let you paint for a month. If I like what you do, I'll take you on. And I painted the Maryland triptych that went into the Museum of Modern Art. But how can you know what to do now? <laughs> Too many people, too many artists, too many galleries, too many museums. But anyway, everyone just has to figure it out. Can I ask one question, the lady first, and then you're the next. Thank you. Uh, you've painted John Wayne, Elizabeth Taylor, Marilyn. Of contemporary actors, is there anyone that you would like to to paint? I wish that I could find a movie actor now that turned me on like that. I've, I've looked. <laughs> you know, I try to watch the movies, and I, I can't really watch the movies very well. So I, I watch uh, uh, documentaries from England, <laughs> and I watch some of the old movies that I have copies of. You know, I still like to watch Gary Cooper and John Wayne and uh, all of the the old movie stars. I mean, uh, to look to watch a Marilyn Monroe movie is really exciting. Now, if I turn on the television and it starts exploding and people cutting themselves in two and stabbing and blowing up, I just But if someone points, finds me a movie star that's as exciting, I will certainly paint it. <laughs> so the last question for tonight? The last question. In the ballroom. <laughs> Mr. Gilbert, it's an it's a enormous pleasure, I think, to see you in life here. I mean, I'm a little bit younger than you are, but you have, I, I know the 60s and the 70s. <laughs> Um, but I'm so amazed that you're here. So I was asking all the time myself, how come that this beautiful Jillian seduces Mr. Jill to come to Lule in Portugal? <laughs> My fault. <laughs> you, why? Tell me how. Tell us how. Well, I come to uh, usually Germany twice a year. And... Uh, So this last year, Ted said, guess what, Jim? You're going to Portugal. <laughs> I said, great, Portugal. That's good. Yeah, um, I've always, when I was a little kid, I was very dark. I worked out in the sun all the time. And people would say, are you Portuguese? <laughs> Because the Portuguese in my area uh, kind of worked on the dairies. <laughs> so you have to go back home now. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's beautiful. Incredibly beautiful. Nice to see you here. Thank you. Good to be here. Okay, so Jim Gill will of course be present for all other questions. Thank you. Um, but you will then have the possibility to ask them directly to him, so he can answer them directly to you. But now um, it's a pleasure that we can open the show and see the exhibition and don't don't stop to come with your questions he's willing to answer them right i enjoy uh, talking to people and ter telling stories and yet i'm a hermit <laughs> when i'm working and isolated i hate to come out and talk 
but I always come alive at these things and talk to talk to people, sign autographs, and hug. I'll hug you if you want to hug. <laughs>